All righty. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we are so excited to have us all together again for another media availability, welcoming Azrae Stevens to the Sparks family. Um, I am going to kick things off today with an opening statement from KB, and then we'll go over to Coach Miller. KB, go ahead. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. So excited to follow up last week's exciting news with today's media availability. As we said earlier, Azure was a top target for us this year as we entered into free agency. We believe very strongly and confidently that she is a key piece to what we're building here, not only in what she brings as an individual player on and off the court, but how she complements some of the other pieces we have on our roster. At 26 years old, she's entering the prime of her career. So really excited that she decided to join the LA Sparks. She had many offers. She was very well sought after by many teams in the league, and we could not be more thrilled that she chose the Sparks as her new team and LA as her new home. All righty, we'll now kick it off to Coach Miller. Coach, go ahead. Welcome, everybody. Great to see everybody. I am in cold Minneapolis for the USA camp, but uh, happy to jump on here. Glad that Azaray has made it back to the States. Um, echoing what KB um, stated, um, as soon as I was hired um, in LA, we started talking about free agency and that centered around Azare from day one. Um, Azare is a obviously a versatile six foot six forward that plays multiple positions and impacts both ends of the court. Um, you know, she has played valuable minutes at the three, allowing you to play you know, extremely long and versatile lineups. Um, she can guard numerous positions at the defensive end. It's just someone we targeted that could be a real anchor, a real Batman with NECA um, for the future. And as we build something special out in LA, so can't be more pleased that Azare has joined us, as Katie mentioned, someone that's entering the prime of her career, and I think poised and uh, positioned to blossom into a star in our league. So uh, can't be more pleased. We are so excited. And I will tell you, she also then fits the most important pillar that we stuck to through this whole process was that we wanted to build it with great people. And I shared this story uh, over and over again, and, and Azra Z is probably tired of me saying it, but um, Z is one of the few players around the league that makes effort each and every game, no matter how big the game, no matter how big the moment, she comes over and speaks to opposing coaches, and she does it with a genuineness. She does it with a smile, and her smile just wins you over. I'm telling you, it's Z is the type of character player you want in your locker room, especially in our situation where we're building something new and special. Um, we tell her over and over, we can't um, can't tell her how much that impacted me through the years that she came over and, and spoke to me each and every game and uh, her genuineness, um, the quality of character that she is, is just outstanding. And Again, just a big, big piece of what we're trying to do. Great. Thank you, Coach and KB. Uh, we're now going to open it up to questions for both Coach and KB uh, before we had it, uh, hand it over to Azure. So if either any of you yeah, have questions for Coach or KB, I'm going to see some hands popping up. Uh, we'll get started with Rashawn Haylock. Rashawn, go ahead. Hey, Azure, con congratulations. Welcome to LA. Thank you. Um, when you think about this this new role uh, in LA and with the Sparks and, and and blossoming into a star, as, as Coach just mentioned, what does that look like for you? Um, it's it's just super exciting. A lot of great energy. Um, you know, I think in the couple the three seasons I was in Chicago, um, I I was a part of the team, a, a good part of the team, and I got great experience through that. Um, but just the vision that KB and Kurt shared with me through free agency was really exciting. And um, the belief that I felt from both of them was super genuine on taking this next step in my career, which is something that I'm excited for, but also excited to have, you know, um, a coach and a GM that share that vision and, you know, believe in that vision along with me. Um, so that was really important for me. Thank you. Thank you. 
Azri, I know you did want to do an opening statement, so I'll let you do your opening statement real quick, and then we can jump okay. back to questions. Azri, go ahead. Yeah, um, I just wanted to say hi. Nice to meet all the LA writers, and nice to see some returning uh, people. Um, but first, I just wanted to start off and just say like a shout out to the fans and just the organization in Chicago. Um, I really enjoyed my three years there and really grew as a player. Um, and you know, appreciate all the support that I had for the three years there. Um, but I'm really, really looking forward to this new opportunity in LA and I can't wait to get there with, with my team, with my coaches and just be a part of the Sparks family. Um, the free agency process was really exciting for me. Um, and you know, I'm really glad to be a part of the Sparks, the Sparks family. So I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you, Azure. We'll go next question to Tukmi Nguyen. Tukmi, go ahead. Hi, Azure. Welcome to LA. As as Kurt said, you are stateside now. You you made yeah. it back. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. J just want to. Where are you now? Then. Um, I'm in Chicago currently. Just had to come here, tie up a few loose ends, and then um, I'll be with my family tomorrow. Okay, so not quite in LA, but soon you will be. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when you talk about the vision that Kurt and KB kind of talked to you about um, for free agency, what was that vision? What what did you have? Um, in your mind about what it would turn out to be in LA for you? Yeah, yeah. I think just from an organizational standpoint, um, just building a great, great team. And like Kurt talked about, a great, you know, locker room full of, you know, good people and, and good energy and, and good uh, momentum to carry us into the season. And then um, just the team that they're trying to build here, obviously, um, Neka, Chene, um, re-signing of Lexi, um, Lou, just, you know, signing Steph. Um, Jasmine Thomas, like a really, really great group. Um, so I think just that vision and, and then the vision of having great people in the locker room as well was something that was really exciting and something I wanted to be a part of. Thank you. We'll go next question to John W. Davis. John, go ahead. Welcome to LA when you get here. Um, kind of wanted your perspective on this. You know, you're talking about, you know, you know, the team's vision and everything like that. But what do you personally feel like you need to do to take the next step to be the type of player that Coach Miller and KB believe you can be? Yeah, um, I think for me, just consistency, um, you know, having a bigger role, like I want to be a consistent player that a team can really, that this, this team can really count on me for night in and night out. Um, and, you know, like Kurt kind of touched on, like, I think I impact the game in a lot of different ways, defensively, offensively, I can play multiple positions. Um, I'm a versatile player, I can guard multiple positions. So just bringing that um, and, and being consistent in all of those areas um, on a nightly basis. Um, and then just even, you know, being a leader, um, being more of a vocal leader in the locker room. Um, but I think with that consistency, that that's a way that you can lead also is, you know, being consistent and being, you know, somebody that your team can count on um, night in and night out. We'll go next question to Mark Schindler. Mark, go ahead. Hey, Z, first of all, happy belated birthday. I hope you had a good one. Um, <laughs> welcome to LA as well. Uh, you know, obviously before the, the season ended, we talked about how excited you were to play in Turkey. Um, and I know you're back stateside now, but I was wondering, you know, what you've taken away from getting to play with TR. You guys were absolutely killing it with Cal Tastere. So, you know, what do you what do you take away from your experience there? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think with overseas, the couple of experiences I've had, um, you know, I do play a lot more. I have played a lot more over there than in the W. So that gives me a taste on what it is to have a bigger role and to be counted on more night in and night out. Um, and I've loved playing with T so much. It's been great. She's a great teammate. Um, and we have a lot of fun out there. Um, and it's just been great, you know, being in that environment with, with Gala. Um, but I think the biggest thing is just having that bigger role and, and, you know, kind of experiencing what that's like, um, on a nightly basis over there. We'll go next question to Howard Megdal. Howard, go ahead. Thank you all for being here. Azure, uh, congratulations. Uh, one for you and one for KB, if I could. Um, Azure, you're just talking about what the bigger role would look like. And I just wonder, as you set a baseline for what that looks like in 2023, uh, are there some stats you have in mind? Are there particular ways in which you think it looks like that bigger role succeeding in your view? Yeah, um, I mean, I think a huge thing for myself is rebounding more. Um, I think that's an area I really can grow in um, is being more consistent rebounding. Um, 
and even other things, you know, I think I'm a pretty good passer too. Um, so like, I think being able to, you know, highlight that area of my game as well um, and box, you know, like I said, there's a lot of different ways that I can like impact. So I think just increasing in all of those areas, you know, um, while being able to still carry on with like shooting well from the outside and being efficient down in the post. But I think some of the other areas in terms of assists and, and blocks and especially rebounds, um, just increasing those numbers. Thank you. Appreciate it. And KB, in terms of the pursuit of Azure, um, somebody who's turned 27, literally February 1st, I joined yeah. Markham, happy <laughs> birthday. How much does getting somebody in what, you know, traditionally would be a player's prime, how important was that for you as you were trying to build what this plan would be this offseason? Yeah, I think, you know, it's starting to be a broken record to you all. You've, you've listened to it for a few weeks now, but as Kurt and I and the staff really laid out the vision and the plan for this build and what we called sort of different pathway. A lot about age and um, the age of, of, you know, some of our returning players coupled with obviously the acquisitions of Jasmine and Dierica. So as we went into the real critical stage of free agency leaning into the first, that became more of a factor as the roster started to really take shape. And, you know, we had Azure at the top of our prospect list for any number of reasons, um, but her age and coming into her prime of her career and being with us um, as part of this foundation, foundational piece of this build was, was just another factor that really just continued to prioritize um, our efforts to bring her to LA. Thank you. Stay warm, Kurt. We'll go next question to Jackie Powell. Jackie, go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much for being here. Um, I'll start with Azure and then I'll make my way to KB and Kurt. So Azure, congratulations. I think what I want to know from you is, I'm curious if you can take me through what the process was like to figure out what your needs were in this new phase of your WNBA career and also how you think the Sparks will fulfill a lot of those needs. Yeah, um, <clears throat> so obviously this was my first like free agency ride. Um, so, you know, in December, I sort of just started thinking in the back of my head, like what are some things that I want to have for me going into this next season? Um, and, you know, it, it was a variety of different things that I was really looking for, but I think just an organization that supported its players really well on and off the court was a huge piece, you know, going into this next phase of my career, I really wanted a place that, you know, felt genuine in that. And um, <clears throat> so that was a huge thing. And, you know, other factors, you know, what the team would look like, coaching, like some of the basic stuff. Um, and so as I started to narrow down and meet with different teams, I sort of just took in what every team had to say um, and, you know, sort of listened at what they would have to offer and then just sort of align that with what I was looking for. And, and LA checked off all the boxes. Um, I really just loved what Kurt, Kurt and KB had to say about, you know, this build in LA. And I just loved their like genuine want for me. You know, I, I think all the other teams did too, but I just felt a lot of, you know, genuine just energy from them on that front. And that was really special for me. Um, and then, you know, just looking at some of the players that they already had and, and the opportunity to play alongside of them, that was something that was really exciting too. And, and the fact that it's beautiful LA, like you can't beat that. So it was all just kind of a, a great package altogether. Thank you. I, I really appreciate uh, the thoroughness in, in that answer. And KB, for you, um, both you and Kurt have been very busy. And so I'm, I'm curious how this free agency period maybe has surprised you um, being in this position where you're trying to build something new? I think the, the, the kind of one thing I didn't really anticipate was sort of the hurry up and wait that went along with this particular cycle. And I haven't been in a free agency cycle in several years. So it was hard for me to compare how different this was under new CPA and and all of that, but in talking to a lot of the other GMs, this this was a very different cycle with, you know, some of the dominoes at the top, and all of us were sort of waiting to see how some of that was going to play out. And and obviously we had our own domino 
in Azure and um, you know I, we really applauded how thorough she was in her process and um, I think us being the winning team on the other side of that process it allowed us to give us some insight into just her as a person and how she approaches things and you know we talked a lot when all was said and done and she chose the sparks as her new home that just the the effort and intention and thoughtfulness and just the way that she approached this whole free agency cycle was really impressive, candidly. And, uh, you know, obviously we're, we're glad we were the winners on the other side, but I think it says a lot about Azare and where she is in her career and how she is approaching this prime of her career that we're all talking about. And I think that's one place in our conversations where we felt we, like we really met and sort of saw each other was this connection around the opportunity we have as a franchise right now and the transformation we're going through and the opportunity she has in her career. And then it just felt like it's the right place, right time, right people. Thank you, I appreciate that. And, and if I could ask Kurt, I mean, Kurt, you've been through free agency for a while now. And so we, we talk a lot about how the concept of free agency has changed over time in this league. But I think what I wanna know from you is, how has it changed since 2020, that first year right after the new CBA? Um, what sort of changes over that maybe three to four span have you really noticed? Yeah, I think we could stay on the phone for or on the Zoom forever to get the talk nuances, Jackie. But, you know, some of it this year uh, was interesting, as KB mentioned, was there was kind of this hurry up and then waiting for dominoes to, that really impacted a lot of franchises on next decisions and next decisions were put on hold. So there was a, there was a shorter period this year, first year, only a 10 day negotiating window. And it seemed like um, it was fast and furious out of the gate. And then all of a sudden everybody stayed, but that 10 day window was certainly different. Um, we had to sign a lot of players um, this year. We didn't have a lot of players under contract. So different for us was trying to balance out a short 10-day window and the ability to travel um, out of the country. And as, as a raise, um, free agency went, multiple teams went over and met her there. And we were just honest with her that we were trying to put together an entire roster and work on our roster construction and that it wasn't going to afford us to spend the, the days traveling. We really needed to spend every minute we could on the phone with other people to surround her with. And we were just really honest and candid and genuine with her is that um, despite us not being in Turkey with her, um, that you know how much she was a piece of what we were trying to do and, and such a centerpiece of that and the versatility you know the versatility of NECA her and and Dierica all who played three at times in their careers all talented enough to guard fives modern day basketball to think about the versatility that we had and and I can point to some success in Connecticut with a great post game and a great post depth and a rebounding team Put us in position each year to win it and you can see i think you can see the trend starting together we've we've really started to put together a really talented group uh with size with size and versatility once again thank you kurt i really appreciate that all right we'll go next question to amanda skirlock amanda go ahead uh, welcome to la jure um uh, my question to you is what were some key lessons that you learned during that championship run with the Chicago Sky? How do you feel like you'll be able to bring that to the Sparks? Great question. Um, I mean, it was my first time going to that all the way um, in the league. So there were so many things that I learned. Um, but I think just one of the main things was the importance of being all on the same page and being together. Um, that season, obviously, it was super up and down for us. And right before the playoffs, like we all got on the same page and it really propelled us through through the playoffs. And so um, that was one of the main things that I learned was just the importance of togetherness. Like it sounds cliche, but it's really important. Like you have to be on the same page in order to work toward a common goal. And um, 
you know, it's just something that can't be underestimated. So um, yeah, that was one of the main lessons, but there were so many things I learned from that experience. <laughs> All righty, we have time for two more questions. So we'll go to Akeem next. Akeem, go ahead. Absolutely, for sure. Absolutely, for sure. Congrats on the, um, I hope you can hear me. Congrats on the, you know, on the big move out there to uh, to LA and uh, can't wait for you to, you know, to shine this season. Um, you know, uh, one question that I, that I, typically have whenever I do these pressers is, you know, you've played in Dallas, played in Chicago, um, but playing in a place like LA is, you know, is an experience for sure. So what is it that you would say that, you know, you're most looking forward to as far as, you know, not only joining the Sparks, but also, um, but also getting the LA experience? Um, yeah, I, I think just, it's one of the biggest markets in the league. Um, so I'm really looking forward to just immersing myself into that. And um experiencing LA culture like you said um LA is just there's no place like it so I'm super excited to just get out there and, and experience all that it has to offer and I think from a marketing standpoint it's it's a it's a world of opportunity um in, in LA so that'll definitely be something that's excited for off the court opportunities and and that was another you know pillar that Kurt and KB we sort of talked about just all the opportunities that LA has to offer and and what the spark does to set that up for its players. And so that was something that I was really, really impressed by. That's yes. Great, we'll go last question to Mark Schindler. Mark, go ahead. Hey Kurt, quick question for you. I know you're obviously a really avid film watcher. Um, and like we talked about with Z playing in Turkey, I mean, like Ray's playing NBL, same thing with Steph, uh, like so many players who are playing in different roles overseas. How do you take some of that in and try and like, obviously you can see skill set and everything and how a player is playing, but when you're trying to morph in your head when you're seeing like what you know how these roles and skills can mesh together um how do you account for overseas play and, and what a different role looks like yeah mark you know certainly as you mentioned we watch tons of film and we follow our players but not only our own players your free agents other players around the league internationally and you watch them take on different roles and that all leads into you know believing uh, are, are are they able to take another step? Um, I'm still a little uh, shell shocked that we had to talk about 21. So Azarae's apologized multiple times about 21. So, but um, you know, like you just saw something special these last couple of years with Azarae in Chicago and, and the versatility, and then when she goes overseas, and it, I just I think she's just scratching the surface. Um, you know, she is so, so talented at both ends of the floor, and we can't wait to highlight her. We can't wait for her to have another role model like a, like a NECA um, beside her. So um, international play is important for us as we're evaluating not only their skill development, but as you mentioned, most importantly, sometimes role differences, differences than they have in the league, and, and how do they how do they um, thrive in those areas and, and what are they adding? You know, you hope they always add to their tool, a tool to the tool bag when they're overseas and Azaray just continues to get better and better. Thank you, coach. I will now give it back to KB for some closing statements. Yeah, I would just say as we always end, thanks all of you for your continued interest and engagement with us. Uh, it's obviously been a a busy off season and free agency cycle for the Sparks and we're not done yet. And you've had a chance here today to get to know Azare a little bit. And I know those of you who follow us closely and those of you who are in our backyard um, can't wait to see her on the court. She'll, she'll be a tremendous and already is a tremendous ambassador for the LA Sparks as we look to really transform the organization on and off the court. We're just thrilled that Azare Stevens is a part of what we're doing. Thank you, KB. And finally, we'll go to Coach Miller for closing statements. I think you feel our excitement, Azare. Um, so excited, you know, and so happy for you. But we'd be remiss not to talk about Azare just coming back from Turkey, that our thoughts and prayers are with all the citizens, all the WNBA players that play in the Turkish League. Um, you know, our thoughts and prayers with everybody with what's going on in Turkey right now. But uh, so, so excited that Azure is a part of the Sparks. Thank you, Coach. Uh, thank you, Azure, for joining us today. And thank you to all the media members for jumping on. Um, we're so excited to have you as part of the Sparks family, Azure. And like we all said, can't wait to see you soon. 
Um, for the media members on here, we will get the recording out to you shortly. And if you need anything else from us, please don't hesitate to reach out. Alrighty, thanks everybody. Have a great day. Thanks. thanks. Good job, Corey. Thanks, Corey.